everybody. Today, Rado runs down Sunflower Valley, which is a roll and write game where two to five players are going to be building settlements and planting sunflowers. And the way it works is each round, six dice are going to be rolled. And then players are going to take turns drafting those dice. So what have we got here? We've got a super sunflower, a regular sunflower, a regular sunflower, a sheep, and two houses. All right, I am the first player. I've got the first player marker in this prototype. I should say the real game won't come with one of my wife's beautiful glass player markers. It'll come with something else. And that means I get first dibs. And as part of setup, each of us has a house in a random location. I'm over here in the west. Jen's here kind of in the center. And what am I going to build? Well, um, super sunflowers are certainly better than regular sunflowers because as you can see on the die, they also give you an extra settler. And there's a race. Whoever has the most settlers at the end of the game scores five points. Second place scores three points. So I think I'm going to go on ahead and take this super sunflower. And now I have to declare if I'm going to put it in my blue, purple, green, yellow, or orange region. And if you can't quite tell the color differences, there's symbols as well. I will go on ahead and put it in my orange region. That means I can build it anywhere here. Because it's a super sunflower, I'm going to get my third resident. And I'll put it right here in between these two mountains because, and I'll just a reminder here that I've got one, two, three sunflowers. And the reason I'm putting it here is at the end of the game, sun, um, every mountain is worth points equal to the number of sunflowers it's got. So this mountain is worth a point, this mountain's worth a point. If I get some more sunflowers here, I get a lot of points off of these mountains because they're so beautiful. I mean, look at these sunflowers. Anyway, so that was one. Now Jen is going to take something as well. And you know what? She could go for this other super sunflower, but sheep are very, very important. So Jen is going to snag one of those, and she will put it... Well, she can't put it in her orange area because I blocked that off. She'll go into her yellow area. And she will put it, say, right here. Little fluffy sheep. Oh, you got to make them kind of fluffy. And so uh, that's Jen's uh, choice. Now... Sheep are important. Well, sheep by themselves aren't worth anything. But if a sheep is paired with a house, that's three points to be had at the end of the game for every pairing you've got. And on the flip side, every house you've got at the end of the game which doesn't have sheep loses you five points. So sheep work very closely with other... Let's try to get a better sheep here. Oh, there's a, sh a fluffy sheep. And... Uh, Oh, there's some fluffy... All right. Anyway, sheep are hard to draw. <laughs> anyway, so that was Jen's. There are still a few more to grab. Hey, Jen left me this other super sunflower. I'll go for that. And where am I going to put it? It's got to go in my purple, um, blue, or green district. Let's go ahead and put it in the purple and put it over here so this mountain is worth something. All right, that's an, and that's a, my fourth person I've gotten. And that leaves Jen a sunflower or a house. She will go on ahead and build a house, which is going to give her two more people. So she's caught up with me in that race. And she'll go on ahead and put it over here in the blue district. And she will put it right here. And that gave her two people. All righty. And so, last one, I was the first player, I can take another sunflower or I can give myself a house as well. It's dangerous taking a lot of houses if you don't think you're going to get a lot of sheep to support those houses. And um, so I'm just going to take a sunflower just because I feel it's a little bit safer. It's going to go into my green zone. Let's make uh, this a uh, happy... Or oops, that's not a super sunflower though, it's a regular one. Oopsie doops. Uh, so, this mountain is now worth a point. These mountains are both worth a point, and that mountain's worth a point. Okay, and the last one is out. That was the end of the first round. First player marker shifts to the next player. We roll again, and the draft continues. But now, here's where things get interesting. We got some rail, folks. In addition to a sheep, a regular sunflower, and a house, we've got one straight and two curved rails. Now, the important thing about curved rails is they have to follow a gentle curve. They cannot be a sharp, nor, nor can they be used as a straight. And the reason you want rails is, there's a couple of things you can do with it. One, you can use rails to get sheep connected to houses that are farther away. If Jen didn't have this house here and she had this sheep here, a couple of rails would connect this sheep to this house so that she wouldn't lose five points for that house. And also, if you've got a big grouping of sheep, 
and a big grouping of houses, you can make a single rail line between the big grouping of houses and the big grouping of sheep and move all the sheep to support all the houses. So you can get some very clever builds with these rail lines. But there's another thing as well. There's the Sunflower Express. The longer it is, you can get 4, 9, 15, 22, or 30 points. And the way it works is you've got to have two houses with two rail lines in between it. So if Jen just put a single rail line here, that would not connect the Sunflower Express. But if Jen, as the first player, were to grab both of these um, curved ones, like say she'll grab this curved one, and she will put it in her yellow area, and she is starting to make a rail line boop, 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 between these two houses. And then it's my turn, and I, well, I don't know, I, I need a sheep for my house. So I don't want to miss out. Who? This might be the last time we ever roll a sheep for the rest of the game. And hey, I can put this sheep over here in my blue area, and then my house is taken care of. I'm not going to lose points on it. Happy sheep. Happy sheep. I'm not going to lose points because it's provided with a sheep. And then Jen says, oh, yes. Thank heavens. She got the purple. And, you know, because um, if I had put this sheep in the purple zone, which I might have done, then Jen wouldn't have been able to build here. But I went blue, which means Jen says, yeah, I got the straight. And oh, no, no, it's not the straight. She says, yes, I got the other curve. And then the curve continues. And boom. She is connected these two houses. That is the beginning of a Sunflower Express line. That's worth four points just for these two houses connected. Plus, if Jen had another sheep down here, this sheep could provide that, and the other sheep via the house could go across this line to provide that. So you can get some fairly complex networks of sheep distribution depending on how you get your lines laid. And I haven't done any lines yet, but my one house, and maybe this is the last house I'll ever build because I don't want to run the risk, Oh, there's another house here. And those houses get me more settlers, which will get me more points. Um, or I could start doing my own line or another sunflower to make my mountains more valuable. And the game continues like this until all of the spaces in everybody's board has been filled up. And that's when we score. Three points for every house-sheep pairing. Five points for every house that doesn't have a sheep. Three points for each of the regions to whoever has the most sunflowers. So if you go sunflower crazy in Sunflower Valley, you could rack up a ton of points. Currently, I've got the most sunflowers in green, orange, and purple. That's nine points, unless Jen catches up with me on the sunflower race. And then also, sunflowers provide points for the mountains. Whoever, um, you know, first and second place for settlers. And you can have multiple... Sunflower lines. Here's an example from the scoring. Hey, here's a house and a house and a house. Much nicer drawn houses with the rail lines. That's three. That's nine points. And then here's another rail line over here. A house and a house connected by two. It has to be connected by two because this didn't count. And uh, you keep on going like that until the end is upon us and we tally up the points and see who made the best Sunflower Valley. And that's the rundown, folks. This is a lovely, charming, fast-playing roll and write. Very easy to teach. The rules for... Um, the dispersal of sheep to houses can be a little complex for younger players, but the rules have a variant that makes it much simpler um, if you're worried about that. Or you can play the more complex way. Jen and I very much enjoy this. What its real strength is, is the angst. Um, you could get the perfect die for what you need, but the location you need to put it in is gone. Or the location um, you know, is wide open, but you can't get that last sheep you need that you're so desperate for to ensure you don't lose the five points. The game is full of agonizing decisions and kind of a push-your-luck element. Do I keep building houses early, hoping that later on I'll get the sheep I need to supply them? Um, do I avoid that and just go sunflower crazy? What, um, you know, what if somebody beats me on the sunflowers and then I end up with nothing? A lot of interesting choices in a fun, fast-playing, roll-and-write Sunflower Valley. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.